Well, hey there, and welcome to the Homer Academy. We've got a special today. I've got the fine folks over at layer.ai to come on and give us a demo. So be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button to see more of this kind of stuff. But without further ado, I am going to bring the fine folks on themselves and let them introduce themselves. So Burju and Amir, thanks for joining me with me today. Welcome. How are you both doing? Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having us. We're super excited to show what we got here. Awesome. So first yeah, of all, um, can I pass it over to you, Burju, to introduce yourself? What do you do there? Absolutely. Yeah, my name is Burju. I'm based in San Francisco. I'm the co-founder and the CRO of Layer.ai. Uh, we are a productivity tool for game artists to create professional game art faster and more efficiently. Uh, I'm joined by Emir today. Uh, Emir, you want to go introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Emir. I'm living in Turkey, in Istanbul, based in Istanbul. Uh, I'm a senior customer success artist in Layer. So uh, basically, I'm going to help you, our users to create styles and using Canvas to create anything they want, actually. That's all for me. Nice. So, uh, Bergie, why don't you tell us a little bit about the tool for people who don't know? Um, what is Layer.ai and what's the, what's the goal there for you guys? Yeah, uh, sure. So we founded Layer um, in uh, February, uh, where we started working with our first top uh, customer. Um, Layer has been uh, a tool that is targeted uh, to improve artists productivity leveraging AI. Uh, when I mean by that is like for layer at layer, we, it's very important for us to uh, help artists learn and use AI uh, to integrate it into their workflows in order to make AI faster and uh, probably more, more cost effectively um, because AI is really powerful tool, uh, but we see a lot of cool demos in the market, but it's all really confusing. Uh, how do I integrate? Uh, how do I integrate this in my workflow and really make use of it? We're really focused on uh, solving that part. Um, and so far, we've been uh, doing great. Even though it's only been a year, we have several top gaming com companies uh, benefiting from Layer to do marketing art, to do monetization art, uh, to do environment art, concept art, like across several parts of the. Uh, art production uh, pipeline. Uh, the key benefit of Layer really is, um, you know, aside from writing text prompts and getting an image quickly, uh, the key key value we provide here is that uh, we believe that you know artists will always want to um, stick to their own art style. They want to keep the art consistent across the board. So what they can do with Layer is uh, train their own. A custom art style in a private workspace without sharing any of their data or assets or contributing to this like massive foundational model learning uh, efforts. They can use AI in private and make more art in their own art style. Uh, and they can do this, you know, across many games, uh, across many, many use cases. So that's the being really the most powerful part of Layer. Nice. Yeah, I obviously uh, I'm a little bit familiar with the tool. We've spoken previously, um, but yeah, training the the own uh, the models to uh, retain the style is super powerful. And like I said, there's loads of different use cases. But before we get too far into it, I know you've got some things to show me today. Um, do you want to head over to share your desktop, Burju, and you can explain a little bit more about the Layer website? and uh, all the stuff that you've got going on there. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Yes, uh, perfect. So yeah, first of all, uh, let's talk about how to sign up. So this is our website, layer.ai. You can sign up here uh, at any time. You'll see some of the customers we work with and you know some, some demo, uh, demos of how the canvas works and our key, uh, key use cases and some of the happy customers, how they're using Layer. Uh, and what the, what where they saw the most value, but uh, after that, I really want to show you like how the uh, how the tool works uh, before I pass on to Emir to uh, with a live demo. So uh, this is um, our workspace. So as you land to layer, 
you would have this prompting box uh, to write uh, your te text prompts and this would be uh, the way, the place to select your art style. As you land to layer, uh, we have a few default styles enabled, so you can just use them to experiment. You can experiment with creating in different, um, you know, orientations. Uh, you can use the enhancer uh, to help with help you generate a, a prompt because you know uh, none none of us like or none, not all of us are writers. Uh, so uh, using some assistance like that to generate more um, text uh, is has been really helpful. So. Um, let me go over some of the basics. So this is your profile section. You can actually add uh, and remove members, assign different roles. So um, it's very important, you know, to echo that you know AI is is better explored together uh, as a team because every team member will find will discover a new uh, way of getting good results. Uh, and it's important to be, you know, sharing each other with these good, good results and uh, drive inspiration. That's why we built Layer uh, for uh, for teams. And most of our users uh, using Layer happily are actually uh, using it as a team. So this is your Layer Drive where you can collaborate. You can have different views. Um, this is where you can, you know, store your assets and uh, collaborate on assets. As you export assets after finishing them in Layer. You can also collect them here. Um, and this is the styles. So in terms of uh, styles, like because you will not have a style created by you, you can actually check like what styles are available for you to experiment with. So some of the styles are created custom trained by us. Uh, it, it means that, you know, we want to showcase to you like how a style can be trained and you know used for different use cases but we also have some of the open source uh, ai models that are enabled of course use them at your own uh, discretion uh, and definitely like uh, understand how these models uh, are trained or work we also add you know disclaimers on models page if you want to uh, go uh, check uh, what it says about a style you'd be able to uh, see it we try to be as explanatory as possible, and you can see uh, some of the creations that people did uh, using these uh, models. It's a good way to explore. Um, but now I'll go back to the you know style studio. What I would do as an artist if I were to use Layer, because you know open source uh, is cool to experiment with, but how am I going to use it actually in my workflow? And uh, in that case, I would actually go ahead and train a style. Uh, so training a style is actually re really simplified. It. You can try to benefit from these um, example trainings uh, that we documented. But before that, if you just want to go ahead, uh, I'll, I'll just like uh, follow the steps quickly for you to see. Uh, so first, you know, we have two, two resolutions available when training uh, styles. This one is uh, for 512 by 512 uh, libraries, and this one is for uh, higher resolution items. So the difference between these two are, are this highest one is a new one uh, that is trained with you know, uh, more data and it has better text comprehension. So for things like characters and environments and you know, backgrounds, I would always go with this option. Uh, this one is great for you know, props and smaller assets. Uh, but definitely like there's a quality difference in these two. Uh, imagine uh, the first one uh, was trained with less, less number of pixels and this one uh, was trained uh, with higher uh, amount of pixels. Therefore, like it's just richer in general. Uh, after selecting your resolution, I would select my um, use case. Uh, for example, let's say it's like single character and I would uh, click on go ahead and I would then, it would ask me to uh, upload my libraries then I would go to my drive and I would uh, select the folder and then uh, let's say select uh, my assets uh, to go into training. In general, it's important to, you know, uh, feed AI as many uh, assets as, as possible. Please do not worry uh, about um, open source like model getting these assets and learning from them. Uh, you're training a style in a private isolated fashion so nobody has access to your assets other than you so for example i 
selected my assets and then layer will help me uh, caption them. Um, and these captions will be generated uh, and will describe these assets are. This is a quick fix we, we, uh, we implemented because uh, describing assets are as important as the assets itself and this describing um, with the right uh, words or like what, what it says is, is pretty crucial, as crucial as the assets quality itself. However, as you can see, it writes so much about it and uh, is are this many words needed? No, not really. It's, if it's just like you can have way less descriptions, but it's important uh, that these captions include the details you want. And as you can see, we gave you a warning because uh, these images are 512, but uh, the training was 1024. For best results, uh, you need to make sure that you are uh, respecting the resolution requirements. So I'm not really like, I'm just gonna go ahead uh, for the sake of, you know, uh, moving forwards. Otherwise, you know, I would need to spend uh, at least like 30 minutes reviewing these captions and fixing the cropping of the assets. I'm moving forward. It says, have you reviewed the captions to imply that they're important. And now I need to uh, name my style. It's like soldier character style. And uh, don't worry if you saw some cartoon assets, like technically you need to just upload consistent assets, uh, consistent art style, but I was just using for the demo pur purposes. So I, I'll do like soldier character and uh, it asks me to uh, write an example prompt. For example, I want to say uh, happy uh, smiling uh, soldier and then write a few uh, more uh, sad soldier uh, and then maybe like surprised soldier, right? So it's important to, you know, write these test prompts for the assets you don't have uh, in the in the training uh, so that it can show you like how it can create something that doesn't exist in the training. And yep, you're ready to go. You can click on create style. I won't do that, but if you are to click on it, you'll have a style ready email in uh, in uh, about 35 minutes to one hour, depending on your resolution. So I'll just uh, quickly go ahead, a training that we did to show you like how it would look like when you receive that email to let you know that the style was ready. Um, so this is a training we did uh, about Luna. We created this beautiful uh, character called Luna. And when creating Luna, as you can see, we included many pauses, uh, many emotional states, close-ups and uh, body pictures and uh, all sorts of pauses and with enough variety. And we really explained uh, how these characters really is. Like, first of all, we named it. We said what it wears. Uh, we also says uh, like the facial expression. Anything you wanted to change in the outputs, like while, while you're creating these characters, should be mentioned uh, as the parameter. And after your uh, training was over, as you can see, these were test prompts uh, that helps me understand how my model is doing. As you can see, the model was able to generate Luna standing with open arms, uh, wearing a casual outfit, smiling, uh, so on and uh, so forth. And in terms of like settings, uh, a lot of people are asking, like, uh, can I add negative prompts? As you can see, we added a bunch of negative prompts to make sure that every time we forge with the style, we use the style, these uh, these words make sure Luna do does not con uh, contain deformation, low resolution, mutations. Um, is it important to add these? Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe because if AI is always coming with artifacts, and those artifacts can be avoided by guiding the AI with these type of words. Uh, and yeah, so I basically will uh, pause, it, pause it here um, and we'll go uh, give the mic to Emir to talk about the fun part. Very cool. Just before we do that, that was, uh, thanks for doing that, Berju. That was really interesting. Um, the, the character looks sensational and I think... Uh, I think you, you blasted through that and you probably, um, like you said, could spend a lot longer on that. Can you just, uh, the prompts that are generated under each of the characters there, um, could you go in and take those prompts to recreate another one? And that might be a silly question, but can you use them as guidelines for, for further 
you know, tweaks on that image? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, so basically like uh, in the training, you created these captions to describe Luna to AI, your AI model. Uh, and then when you forge with the, this model, forging means uh, generate asset, new asset from this model. Um, in your first forge, uh, every asset that you forge uh, will have a seed uh, phrase. If you actually um, use that seed, uh, you can always uh, create the same thing. Uh, because after all, that seed is almost like an identifier of this generation. It's the secret code to get exactly the same thing. So yeah, yes, I didn't, I didn't yeah. thank you. Sorry, yeah, uh, thank you. I didn't have the verbiage of, of the seed. That's kind of where what I meant. I just wanted to make sure that was really crystal clear because I think that's so powerful. Um, and I just wanted to make sure uh, I was understanding that right. And uh, yeah, that's that's so cool. Um, should we pass it over to Amir now, who will go a little bit deeper, and then we can come back on, and I've got a ton of questions, uh, you know, all about the uses and stuff like that. But uh, why don't we hand it over to Amir? He can go into uh, a little bit more detail on his demo, and then we can swing back around and do a little, uh, a little, a few more questions, so we speak. Let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. As Burju mentioned, we have a new homepage in here, so we can start uh, creating new things in Canvas. Uh, at your homepage, uh, when you click on the new Canvas button, you are automatically go to the Canvas page. So it's really familiar to Photoshop, actually, using this Canvas with layers. So before you create anything, you have to select your desired style from the prompt box. For example, let's click on this this one, and you will see your usable styles in here as a list. So I'm going to use our Luna style, and I'm just click on the use. After selecting style, you will see an example prompt in the prompt box in here. So uh, the day is the Valentine's, so I'm going to create a, a scene for the Valentine's. Let's say. Luna is celebrating Valentine's Day. She is wearing a red dress and then forge. This is a basic prompt, actually. I'm just I just want to create a scene with a Valentine's Day and. I just want to see her in a red dress. And generally, like for the sake of um, the demo, we didn't show you how we train all other styles. Uh, Luna was just one example. That was a character. You can do backgrounds, props, environments, like anything you want. As you can see, I, I, I just got four alternate variations uh, of my prompts and each one has a Luna with red dress and obviously is celebrating Valentine's Day right now. If you are not satisfied with that, with that you can for forge multiple times indeed. Uh, but before forging, I'm going to show you how, can, how, how you can change the properties of the forge. Uh, th there is a, a drop down. When you click on the arrow button, you will see the prompt strength and interference steps in here. You can play with all those bars uh, to create uh, much better variations. If you go higher it on the prompt strength and forge again with the same prompt, you, you will get slightly better resolution images. Uh, but uh, I have to say this: it's depending on your style asset resolution. Uh, while this Luna training uh, is already trained uh, with high resolution images. So we will eventually get better results like this. And better, of course, is a subjective term. Uh, it's important exactly. to, you know, uh, play with these settings and understand what works better uh, for you. 
but the reason why um, we hide these uh, all layer is that we want to really like make AI easy to learn and eliminate the complexities. But as artists spend more time, uh, you know, using the brush, making changes, like uh, they start playing with these settings and um, get into a bit more advanced uh, usage of AI. Uh, but yeah, one of our core principles is that any artist should be able to uh, learn uh, to create with layer as fast as possible. Exactly. Okay, so let's let's create a something like a marketing asset uh, for Valentine's, uh, and let's say we are going to create some buttons and also a scene. Okay, I'm going to cancel this. Okay, for the buttons, uh, I I would like to use uh, our predefined uh, game UI uh, style in here. So, because I don't really have my own button style and I want to use this. And after selecting this, I'm going to remove my prompt box in here. For buttons, uh, I can type any kind of prompts to my prompt box as like Luna. So, for example, let's say Valentine's Day themed button. Going to take all these defaults. And the reason why uh, button word is captured by the style is because we train this UI style uh, with a lot of game buttons and really teach it. Otherwise, it might be making buttons for, for clothing, right? That's why it's very important to train your custom styles uh, to really teach what you mean by a button because base model doesn't have enough, like, specific information about gaming necessarily. Yeah. If you if you just prompt and click on the forge, you, you will get uh, images like this. This is actually look like looks good. It's promising. But as an artist, uh, I always uh, try to draw through my buttons as I want. So let's cancel on this. But I'm going to show you how to use any of this after the drawing, I'm going to cancel this and I keep my prompt as a Valent Valentine's Day theme button, but I'm going to select our brush tool in here. And as you can see, I can change all my brush size, hardness, opacity, and flow as like in Photoshop. And I'm going to select a color, let's say it's going to be pink. Um, and I'm just drawing my button like this. Let's say something like that. When I when you draw something in your canvas, it's going to be a forge reference. So this prompt going to take reference this drawing. When you click on the forge reference, you can play with your similarity and density for your prompt, for your drawing. And we are going to make it less similar like this and just click on the forge. And when making you... it less, less yeah, similar sure. to your drawing uh, means it's, uh, it's going to go away from um, the drawing. So otherwise, it will follow your exact drawing. Sorry, Emir, for yeah. cutting you off. No, no, no problem. As like this, because, you know, there are many empty pixels in here, so it has to feel, feel the, uh, the original pixels. When we got this, like this one, okay. We have buttons like this. This is good. Let's watch one more time. The high strength, more steps, and less similar. This is promising. Okay. This is why so good right now. When you satisfy the forge, the result actually, you can select the forge by clicking on the forge image, accepting this, 
accepting accepting uh, the forge as a new layer. When you do this, you will see a new layer appeared in here, the, your layer tabs. In layer tab, uh, you, you can add many layers if you want, like Photoshop. As you can see, we have button in here, so we don't need this drawing anymore. So we can close the layer visibility in here and open the just button one. So I would like to, I, I I like the uh, I really want to like to use this button in my scene. So I'm going to remove my buttons background. The I mean the black pixels in here. So I only need to click the remove background button in here or remove background button in here. So with one. Here we go. After this this process, we can scale down our button as we like. So okay, our button is ready in here, so I can keep this with closing visibility. Now I I need a scene with my Luna style drawing. So in the same canvas, I'm going to select my style as Luna in here. I'm going to use this and going to change my prompt. Let's say Luna has a Cupid and let's say mid air flying and forge. It will take a bit more time when you change the style in the same canvas, uh, but uh, it's probably take up something like 60 seconds at the first forge. Um, that's mainly because uh, we are loading the style to activate it, and once it's active, it works just faster. Uh, but when you switch between styles, like there's a bit of a uh, load time. Okay, we have a cute Cupid in here. Okay, this is pretty good. And I'm going to accept this as a new layer. So my Luna is new as a new layer in here. Also have my Valentine button, but my button is uh, keeping under the Luna layer so I can hold my layer in here by clicking mouse button, holding the first button, and move a ball to this one. So with that, I can use my button as a visible one. So let's align with the layer uh, with using orientations in here. So you can use the any layer orientation. Okay, keeping like this. So this time I create my scene, I create my button. Uh, for example, if you have a logo with this, uh, with rel related with this, uh, you can just click the import image in here. When you import, when you click on the import image, you will directly go to your drive. So if you have any logo in here, let's say, I think I have one, like, Um, yeah, download download now could work too. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, that that works. That will work. Okay, like this. When you add okay. this one, this is going to be a new asset in here. So you can scale it down. Like this one. Sorry. That's got this image. We have here, we can use scaling down here like this, and we can select both and only moving to here like this. So if you have logo or something like that, you can do the same thing for the logo. Uh, this is a basic marketing asset creation in layer actually with using different styles, uh, different themes. And also when you finish like this uh, for editing, I'm sorry, uh, for editing, uh, you, you can just click on the export button uh, in, in here. When you click on the export button, 
you can directly download the whole image uh, as a PNG or as a PSD. This is uh, much useful for the artist. Uh, so as an artist, I always use the download as PSD because when you download as uh, Photoshop format, uh, you, you will get all the layers in here in stacked in your uh, document. So you can edit uh, layer by layer, one by one. Uh, you can do some polishments, some last touches uh, to make it ready uh, for marketing. This is basically how you use uh, Canvas in layer. Um, Kevin, uh, do you have any questions for the audience? I'm sure you have some. So I have can make so it many questions. It's unbelievable. Uh, so when yeah. the, the along the side there where we had our previous ones, can you drag those in and use those from um, as as your library? The the first sort of lunar iterations of the character. I saw them on down the down the right hand side there. Um, is that because I know you can load uh, images in from your library? Um, if yeah. I just flick back to Amir's screen real quick. Yeah, Amir, let's uh, activate it. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the where where your cursor is now, can you just click and and put those in the scene there? So you did this the uh, so oh, the yeah. ones you did at the bottom of the the ones you did like uh, right at the start. Mm -hmm. Can you can you drag those ones in? Yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. Right. I thought you. I thought you probably could. I just wanted to make sure that you can access them and drag them in. Um, no, I'll, actually, I'll actually, actually, this uh, recent forged panel is, gives you all the uh, uh, recently forged items in here. So, if you want to change the scene, for example, uh, let's say we have a cupid one in here, but uh, we are just going to change the scene like this one. Okay, I'm just going to select this porch and add as a new layer so okay this is my yeah. layer new layer there so we go. i i only need to hold this layer clicking with mouse below this one open the visibility here we go awesome yeah i thought that was the case i just wanted to make sure because uh, i'm i'm really uh, familiar with photoshop so I, I totally get this and the export to psd is knockout um are you going to be able to lock those layers on on the left hand side there? Because I could see that being really helpful with uh, if you get you know a, a canvas with quite a lot of uh, objects on it or layers um, to be able to lock some of those up. Is that if you thought about that or can you do that? Actually, uh, we don't have any locking layers right now, but it's a great recommendation because as an artist, we all know. Uh, somehow you have to lock some layers uh, to prevent the moving. I, I understand that. I totally get it. So uh, it has to be somewhere in here. So uh, that's a great recommendation. Uh, yeah. And I believe we, we could add that. Yeah, no, I'm just, I just know for me from using Photoshop for too many years and stuff like that, um, it would be, I would always move the wrong thing and it'd be super annoying. So I think, uh, as it, as you get more complicated on there, the, the trick is always to keep it as easy and as simple as possible. Um, and I, I would personally love to see it. I was totally blown away by that. I think that's so smart. Yeah. Um, that's what it, it's really, really, it's really helpful. And I, I love the fact that it's, I, it, there's practical applications that, you know, you can, you've just shown us a really great use case, uh, keeping all within layer. You know, of course you can go and export it to Photoshop and, and tidy it up and add, add stuff or effects or something. But I think, um, it, it's hugely impressive. Um, I was really, I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed that. The button thing blew my mind as well a little bit because that's really clever. And I can see because of the way you've arranged the workspaces that you can have your separate repositories and different assets and it it's really quite powerful. Um, one thing that we haven't mentioned yet, um, you've got a, a Unity plugin as well. So you can do, um, can you tell me how the Unity plugin works a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, ultimately, you know, we all want to uh, speed up game development uh, process, right? And one of the challenge game developers have is like having the assets available in Unity so that you can prototype games faster. 
Um, so we built a plugin in with our really limited resources that allows game developer to prompt assets to build like scene and quickly prototype. Uh, however, uh, I would say that it's still early days for, um, you know, developers making the art within the engine for the game directly. Uh, that's why like we have not invested so much time on it. Uh, we invest most of our time in building layer so that artists uh, can collaborate, use uh, AI efficiently. So as we maybe get more resources and grow our tool more and uh, the tool is in great place uh, for artists, we're going to start investing more on um, the uni Unity side of things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but for, I think... now, uh, for now, the, the plugin does uh, the basics like getting assets really quickly in a scene. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I was just super curious of uh, how advanced it was and how far along you got. But honestly, um, I can see the better use case of what we've what you've shown us today with these the marketing assets. And I also think like playable ads, uh, I think will be a really uh, a great use case for the 2D artwork type stuff. Well, two, yeah, 2D artwork uh, for the playable ads and, and generating the, the stuff for that. What do you think, what's the, what's the bit, what are you most proud of at this early stage? Because you've come such a long way um, in such a short time. What's the proudest feature you've, you put, you, you've got working to your satisfaction right now? Uh, the cameras. Um, yeah. because, you know, a lot of tools are focused on the cool, the AI, like, boom, like let, it's gonna, let's create magic in seconds, uh, aspect. Uh, what I'm really, really, really proud of at uh, layer is we kept it real and we really worked with our, uh, artists, uh, who were patient with us to build the best workflow tool, uh, that is possible that can be humanly possibly built by a six people team uh, in this time frame so i'm very proud that we we are really committed to artist workflows yeah i'm not surprised that was knockout i mean i've not seen I... that bit, bit before um and i played uh i've i I played around with it a fair bit, but it's been a while, if I'm honest, and uh, I've not seen that before. And I, like you said, that is actually really useful uh, and very smart indeed. What do you think about the copyright side of things? You touched on that early when you started uh, explaining about how we, how you start teaching the the model. Can you talk to us a little bit about copyright? Because it's always the elephant in the room a little bit. How... How do how's the best way to approach it, and what's your stance on on the copyright side of things? Um, a great question, and definitely uh, need to be uh, you know talked about. Um, copyright is hugely important. I can't echo how important it is uh, for us to respect copyright, uh, personality rights, IP rights of uh, these wonderful uh, creators around the world. Uh, that's why we take it very, very seriously. Uh, and in fact, we built layer in such way uh, that it still a uh, benefit, like helps our users benefits from uh, generative AI with um, reduced risk of infringing copyright and uh, IP rights. Uh, when I mean by in, like reduced risk, um, to clarify all of the foundational uh, generative AI models have some sort of copyright issues uh, because after all these models uh, they are so good and amazing because they were fed so many uh, images and so many data points like billions of data points uh, into their models that's why they're able to understand text so well they were able to produce this like high quality visuals but um, they did not consent with artists when they were training uh, these models and uh, we acknowledge that's a problem. Um, we hope uh, regulation will catch up and uh, there's going to be some you know, rules in place to protect uh, individual creators, hopefully even reward them. Uh, but until then, the way we tackle um, these concerns is that we built Layer um, as a tool that allows artists uh, to train their personal uh, styles, 
uh, during this application, like we actually fine tune, we apply a method called fine tuning. And at that point, we take the world context from uh, the base model. So the base model understands like Halloween, Valentine's, uh, this is a table, this is a chair. Uh, it gets all that con uh, context. And then uh, the fine tuning application takes the visual references from our users own library and IP uh, and allow them uh, to create more art in their art style using AI. During this application, no uh, prompts, text prompts or uh, assets are shared uh, with the base model provider. Therefore, uh, if you're using layer, you're not really contributing to, to the base model uh, intentionally or unintentionally. It's all happening in a, a private workspace. We also ourselves do not train any models based on uh, our customer's data. So we are actually the tool layer. Uh, we're not, um, we're not uh, training models uh, without their, getting their consent or training any models at this point uh, to make sure that you know, they have peace of mind. Uh, we are purely focused on you know, enterprise gaming use cases where IP is hugely important and needs to be protected. Um, and also, um, we definitely um, are observing the market and following the uh, regulations across the world, uh, and we'll make sure uh, to do what's best uh, for the community. Yeah, thanks for that. I think that's a, that's a great answer um, and good to know. And I think the, the privacy side of things is pretty important, and I love the fact that you've got it's your own, it's your own private AI to amplify your existing artwork so you don't have to recreate tons of different i mean you we, you put the emotions in there and the outfits and the seasonal themes and i think that's really um it's super cool i mean i don't know how else i can say it. it's really quite cool um what's coming next for you and by the way all the links for layer of how to sign up and everything will be below this video so don't panic you'll get all the the links and and the sign up form and all of that what what's the what's the coolest thing around the corner if it can get much cooler indeed what's the next big thing you guys are working on yeah absolutely so uh well since we've been in uh, action for the past year we of course collected like over 200 uh, requests from world's best artists and gaming companies and of course uh, we prioritize them in order of importance and we'll be definitely like shipping uh, all these features one by one in the next six months uh, as fast as possible. And we're going to be also uh, investing a lot on learning resources uh, because uh, we believe that like AI has a huge onboarding problem. Um, these are all new skills. Um, a lot of the artists we work with are coming from, you know, traditional backgrounds. In fact, I'm married to an artist who's also a traditional artist, but also a technical artist. Right. So we believe it's hugely, hugely important to invest in our, our users learning and education so that they can come learn this tool to be faster, to be more efficient and almost future proof uh, their their careers. Because AI, of course, is very powerful and it has certain impact on um, on the job market. And we want them to be equipped with the best resources uh, so that they can really use this tech not go away from this tech, but just use it in your in their benefit. Um, and the next thing, of course, uh, we'll be working on is uh, I won't dive into like super nitty gritty future details, but uh, of course, like animation is a huge, huge, hugely time consuming uh, part of uh, gaming workflows. It's really expensive. It takes really long time. It's extremely important. Uh, so we're going to be definitely tackling that. Uh, wow. This uh, this means you know, 2D animation and helping with spine and sprite uh, yeah. animation workflows and really to improve every person's life a little bit more uh, who works in the art production pipeline eventually, right? So we are 2D today as 3D allows us uh, to do uh, to perform our duties like effectively and as efficiently as possible. We will also uh, expand layer to 3D. Um, also, one thing I want to say. We built layer as a model agnostic fashion. Uh, so we are watching the models as they come up. Like if Meta has a fantastic model, if Google has a fantastic model, if like 
anybody has a new fantastic model will always be the first ones uh, to first grasp and understand uh, then hopefully adapt to gaming use cases nice wow you covered a lot there so you're just doing you're doing 2d you're doing 3d is there anything you're not doing are you going on holiday at all are you having a break at all um yeah, uh, short breaks here and there, but definitely committed. Uh, and if necessary, I won't take holidays. But I think I perform better if I take holidays. <laughs> I think you should. Uh, you've done an awful, <laughs> awful amount of work. And a team of six is its incredible what you've managed to achieve so far. I think we're going to start to wrap this up. Is there anything you want to um, give some final thoughts upon or any any tips or tricks? Of course, you you mentioned, you know, it's only as good as uh, being able to learn how to use these tools and how to feed them correctly to get the results you desire. Is there any sort of golden nuggets or tips? Maybe Amir, you could you could share some as well uh, to sort of wrap up today to like your your sort of your recommendation for using certainly layer and any other tool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the The golden ticket is to learning all those tools is deep diving, actually. So as an artist, I never expect 100% excellent images with one click from any AI. So you have to go deep diving. You have to play around with each tool you ha you can afford. So if you if you share my screen uh, right now, so I, I I do some changes to our scene because uh, while you are uh, Q and A, uh, but I couldn't hold myself as an artist. So uh, this is a great scene actually, uh, but I see two moons in here. And also this is a Valentine day scene, but it has to be more happy, uh, more exciting day. So I just select Luna's face and just change it a bit more happy with Happy one, as like this, as you can see. When I zoom in, you can see how happy she is right now. Nice. So I just changed, I, I just select the face area, just type Luna is happy. So I got three, four alternate happy faces in here. So after this one, I found out we have two moons in here in the same scene. I, I don't want to allow that. So I just select this area and just refill the area with nothing as a prompt. So we have only one moon in here. So all those are a different layers. So I can move all those layers in here. So after that, I found my original logo and upload this and just put it on the this balloon. So we have better marketing asset right now, as you can see. <laughs> Everything looks perfect for me right now. So Luna is happy. We have a one moon, an exact scene. We have a, a CTA button, and also we have a Valentine, Valentine Day's logo at Balloon. So this is perfect for me. So how, 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 how did I achieve that? So deep, just deep diving. Just uh, use the tools, uh, watch the tutorials, uh, look around the internet. So you will find a bunch of uh, things, to useful things, actually. But as an artist, uh, it already looks like Photoshop. So Yeah, it I, does. I, I mean, that's, I, that's I, the thing. I, it's, uh, you just wanna, you, it's great to be able to generate these sort of things, but like, that's great. But I wanted to, she wasn't happy enough, and you went in and you had the ability to change indeed, that. Indeed. Yeah, that's pretty powerful indeed. Um, thanks for doing that. I know, I know the feeling about not being able to stop and tweak and fiddle when it's just like, I still got to do it. Um, Burju, any, any final thoughts from you today? Yeah. Uh, final thoughts is, uh, we are a small team, uh, but we have big hearts and big patience. So, uh, I would love you to go try layer. Uh, if you have questions, if you want us to personally, uh, support your learning, we are in it together. It's a long journey. Uh, we appreciate you reaching us out and trying to learn the tool uh, and join uh, the 50 plus companies uh, we're working with. Uh, we count every happy uh, game company uh, 
these days, you know, like uh, who are using layer finding value when they tell us I'm going three times faster thanks to layer, uh, we're just celebrated. Uh, we're living and breathing this. Uh, so please don't be strangers, uh, reach us out. I wanna thank Homa Games and Kevin Yu uh, for hosting this session. It's extremely important to clarify the nuances about copyright. It's really important to show actual workflows and use cases. It's important to, you know, emphasize that uh, this is not like a magic uh, with one words and it, the world is not as pink as, <laughs> as that. And as every art tool uh, and every artwork, this needs some time and patience and, uh, and but hopefully you're just three times faster. That's what we hear from our users. Nice. Well, um, yeah, like I said, I think it, I think it will be, um, certainly part of many people's toolbox. Um, it's just, you know, an additional tool. Um, and I congratulate you on how far you've come so far. It's super awesome. And I could see myself playing around this for, for way too long, I think. Um, but with all that said and done, like I said, all the links and everything to go and check out, check Lair out will be underneath this video. I will, all I really want to do is say thank you for joining with me today and, and sharing, sharing Leia with us. It's, uh, it's very smart indeed. So with all that said and done, that's going to go and wrap it up for all of us today from Burju, Amir and myself. But go and check out the Leia demo down from the link below. And uh, yeah, we will see you next time. See you later, guys. Ta-da. Thank you so much, Kevin. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.